Hey, uh, Rob Walker here with Mongrel Bees. Um, today I'm going to talk about how I do these. These are candy boards. These are insurance policy to help your bees get through the winter. I have some subscribers, um, not a ton. If you subscribe, that's great. Uh, I don't make any money off of this. I'm only doing it to mess with my kids. So if you like a good uh, old nerdy dad, gotten more YouTube videos than his kids, um, help me out and uh, we, can, we can mess with them together. Um, all right, so where I get the lumber. Uh, these are short boards. You do not need to pay for premium lumber for this. I do have a really great thickness planner and joiner. I got cherry and walnut and all sorts of stuff. Um, you just want to use plain pine. Um, this is not furniture. And what I use is the one resource you can't use anywhere else is that's the coal lumber at Lowe's and Home Depot. I have found, I, I don't get as well, uh, I don't do as well as at Home Depot. Um, I get a lot of my coal lumber from Lowe's and it can be anywhere from 50 to 80% off. I got a huge, um, I lucked out. This past summer, I walked up one day and there was just a massive stack of one by material, like seven or $800 worth. I paid maybe 75, 80 bucks and all of it was straight. It was, I, I don't I have no idea why it was called lumber. There were some split boards, but the rest of it just, just looked great. So it was pine and, and um, some cedar in there, uh, some other um, great woods but almost all of it was one by. There was like two pieces of plastic I threw away. So it does not matter if you've got a two by, I'm sorry, a one by six by 20 or a one by six by 16, I guess is what I saw. Um, if it's got a two inch bend over 16 feet, you will never see that in these short sections. So it is fine to use uh, cull lumber in beekeeping equipment. Now, the one tricky part is if you have a really twisted up one by 12 and you try to make a high body out of that, you're going to have a hard time clamping those finger joints or a half lap or whatever to, to get that box. And it could split later on if you have to use a lot of pressure to, to bind it up. But for very small pieces like this, that one by lumber is great. So uh, sometimes you can get a mix of one by lumber and plywood. Um, plywood's ridiculous right now. So if you can get that, then you can make like your own inner covers and outer covers and all sorts of stuff. So buy your, get your lumber cheap. Um, pine is fine for this stuff. I, I used, <laughs> I had some, I got some really cheap cabinet grade plywood once and I used that to make some really decorative hive tops that were triangles on top or whatever the, I forget what they're called, the gable tops. Uh, that was, that was terrible. Um, the wood is, the glue is not, rated for exterior it soaked up and it just delaminated all over the all over the place so plywood needs to be like uh exterior sheathing then they'll use the exterior woods um don't try to use interior cabinet grade plywood outside it it's going to be a real mess uh even on the inner covers there's so much moisture in the hive that they, i've seen those just warp and delaminate pretty bad so as, as much as possible solid pine if you can get it so dimensions on this this one's two and five eighths seemed like a pretty good size. It also made it easy because I was using some one by sixes. So I just split them down the center and I was able to chop out sections that had uh, bad knots or, or gouges or whatever. Uh, so almost none of these actually have any knots in them. And I really didn't have that much waste because I'm using short sections. Uh, the way the joints, uh, these are just half lap. You could just do butt joints. I think half lap lasts a little bit longer. Um, so I prefer it's not that hard. 3 8 inch half lap. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, liberal amount of glue in there. I use a tight bond three and I use a really great primer and a really great paint. So you're using small amounts of high quality product. It will go a long way. The screen, it's quarter inch hardware cloth. You can get that in the back section of Lowe's. I got a three foot roll, maybe I think 10 or 15 feet long and it was like five or six bucks. So this will last a long, long time. Um, I've got some unpainted ones that I still use and I made them like eight or nine years ago because you're only putting these on like uh, once a year for a few months. Uh, they are an insurance policy. So here in Virginia, we have really bad, uh, it's, it's tough for bees because we're not running insulated hives. And so what'll happen is we'll have a situation where the, the days warm up 
and the bees go out on cleansing flights and they also start looking for nectar. And um, if they don't find any nectar, they just burn through the nectar they ate that morning to, to go fly. And so they've got to eat a little bit when they get back. But the, the bigger problem that we have is if they do find like pollen, uh, like for example, I'm looking out the window right now and we still have three inches of ice and snow, but I think it was a week and a half ago, we had maples blooming. And so um, the bees will be out there collecting pollen, the queen gets stimulated and she starts laying eggs. The big problem here is that it is so much easier to keep a, a cluster at like say 50 degrees um, in a torpid state when the outside temperature is 50 and you're keeping it inside at 50, you don't have to really use any resources to do that. But if she starts laying eggs and the outside temperature is 50 or less, and you have to keep the inside cluster at 92 because you're trying to keep that larva alive, you're gonna eat through a whole lot more sugar because you got a 40 degree difference there you're trying to, to create. So as soon as that bee, the, the queen starts laying, then your sugar content, I mean, they can blow through uh, stored up honey a whole lot faster. So if you go out there and you lift a hive in December or let's say November, December, and you're like, oh, I'm good. I got 60, 80 pounds of honey on there. You can come back in February and you got like three. So uh, that's something to watch out for if you've got swings in temperatures in places like Virginia. Um, we're right there in the middle, and that's one of the things we really struggle with. And uh, I think a lot of bee beekeepers don't realize it. I've I've had hives that were just great, and I've opened them up, and I'm like, hey, I just had five hives die, and some guy on the internet says, oh, you didn't check for mites. I'm not. I'm like, no, I had five pounds of dead bees on the bottom boards. That wasn't mites. They were all alive like a month ago. So five pounds of bees don't die overnight because of mites. They die because when I open it up, all their butts were sticking at me because they ate through all the sugar in the hive, even though there was plenty in there. Um, Italians are kind of notorious for, for doing that, that kind of thing because they, they breed up so quick. So the candy boards are an insurance policy. If, um, they're not gonna save every hive, but it's great to put it on top, especially if you notice they're a little light. So I went through and I, kind of lifted up the back of my hives. And the ones that were a little bit on the light side, I popped them open and I put sugar boards on top. The thing is, the sugar boards that I've made in the past did not have these two cross members. And so when I put it on top, um, there were bees right there on top of those frames. And because I didn't grab my smoker um, and I already irritated them, I basically set it on top and I know I squished a bunch of bees that were right there at the top. Didn't like that, and I didn't like the fact that when that metal is kind of pushed down on those frames, um, they really can't get to it. They have to eat around it as opposed to having full access to the whole bottom of this. And depending on how they're clustered and, and things like that, they don't really like to go to the outside edges because that's where it's cold. Because three quarter, three quarter inch pine is not a great insulator, and so that side is cold. So you're leaving the warmth of the cluster to kind of come out here. Um, you're getting really close to the edges, especially if there's any gaps where the cold air is coming in. So I wanted to be able to give them access to the center if they wanted it. And so what this is, it's the sides are two and five eighths. And then you can see when I, when I was making the sides, I ganged them together and I cut out a half inch piece here. I probably could have gotten by with just half inch supports. And I think that probably would have been enough, but by having them hang down below this three sixteenths of an inch, it allows that if this sags at all, it's gonna to touch those top bars. And so there's not gonna be a whole lot of pressure on this, this support, but it's still gonna suspend the, the wire above the cluster. And so there's still gonna be room for the bees to move around in here. So there's bee space designed in here that they can move around and they can pass the sugar back and forth and they can stay under this. So I, I felt like this was a, a better design than what I've seen in the past and what I've used in the past. Um, it doesn't set flat, but it does keep the, the screen on the bottom flat. And so you just, just kind of divide the distance by th uh, three or four so you can get, get the right spacing there. The inside, um, so I, I do glue and glue and nail. So uh, this is tight bun three uh, inch or inch and a quarter, 18 gauge or 16 gauge nails. Be very careful when you're dealing with pine, especially um, the harder stuff like the fur, 
um, that grain will take those soft nails and it'll spin it off because you're 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 not putting it into a ton of stuff and you're putting it into end grain and I've seen many times these things spin out so don't get your hands anywhere near the ends don't hold it like this and nail even though you're nailing this way I will tell you that that nail will come in and it'll scoop you know the right end of your hand so don't have your hand anywhere near these corners when you're nailing them as far as the staples um, what I do is on the inside you can see I use a uh, quarter inch um, narrow crown staples. They're, they're, they can be anywhere from a quarter inch or three eighths to a, an inch, half inch long. But I nail them in at an angle. So I try to get at least two wires at a time. I also dial back the pressure. You're not actually attaching anything. You're actually just pushing this staple into the wood. And if you don't dial back the pressure, um, if you have it on a single piece, it'll, it'll cut right through that metal. So it'll staple the whole side and all of a sudden it'll fall out because it's not actually holding anything. So you want that staple to be proud of the metal. You, you want it to hold it in there. You don't actually go through it. Um, and it can, it can be proud. You don't have to nail it in or, or anything like that. You're just kind of holding it in place. Um, uh, and the shear strength will keep it from falling out. Now, here's the cool thing, the thing that I found, that I love to use on these. And this is... It's Christmas paper, your wife or spouse, spouse uh, whatever. Um, it's Christmas paper. It's the stuff that they um, they put into Christmas bags and they kind of fluff up the top. Um, it comes it comes in big sheets of it. It's got a shiny side. That's the side I put up towards the sugar. The bees will eat through this just fine. There's no really nasty chemicals. And if there were, it's a very small amount. Um, I've never had any issues. I like using this for a lot of reasons. Number one, when it's wet, it is stronger than newspaper. Newspaper, when it gets wet, I mean, it just falls apart. And if you move these things around, or if you try to put newspaper into these trays, it cuts it all up and it kind of everything drizzles out. I love this white stuff. It works perfect. The bees chew right through it, but it holds the candy board and it's, it's almost like um, there's a finish on it that I guess is somewhat waterproof. I don't know, because uh, it still will drip through and get wet. Um, you can actually see it get wet. Um, but for whatever reason, it, it really holds the, the sugar in there. So I use this, this Christmas paper. It lays right into the tray. Usually I overlap it and it comes up on the sides. And then once I lay it into the trays, then I'll come back and I use, um, a mud mixer so uh, you can get these I got this off of Amazon for like nine bucks I think it's Teflon coated doesn't have to be uh, this kind I don't think will work I think um, I'd end up breaking these blades this is more for finer paint so you do want to use something that's like made to mix mud it's gonna be easier on your drill this is um, this is a Ryobi brushless uh, hammer drill and I still have to set it on low because it'll bog down and usually it's a situation where I'm kind of kind of chopping it in there. When you get the consistency, the consistency you want to get is kind of uh, a little bit thicker than an IC you would get at 7-Eleven. Kind of more like snow cream if you ever made that with your kids. Um, I can pick this stuff up. I can pack it. I can make it into a ball. It's not quite fondant. Um, if I squeeze it real hard, um, a little bit of water will come out. That's pretty much the consistency I make them. And then I'll stack them all up overnight. So, cause sometimes it's a little bit more liquid, sometimes a little dry. Overnight, the moisture will kind of go through the cake itself. It'll even out and I'll end up with a lot more solid cake. I do, um, one thing I, I will do is I, uh, a lot of times I'll have leftover, I'll have sugar, I'm sorry, I'll have honey leftover from the previous year and no matter what I do, um, I end up with a bucket full of very thick crystallized honey if I haven't sold it. And what I use that for is, is I'll um, put like a quarter cup of honey in here just so the bees can smell it so they'll move up there. I know some guys uh, say don't do that because it'll transfer diseases and stuff. Uh, I've never had an issue. I use my own bees. Um, they're, they're healthy. Um, but I know that it, it can be a slight risk. Now, one thing I will do is I'll add in a little bit of this stuff. Um, it's called Rooster Booster. 
It is a vitamin uh, supplement with some bacillus, um, lactobacillus that theoretically could help a little bit with, with nosema and dysentery uh, during the winter if they're stuck inside. So um, I'll put just like a teaspoon of that in the water before I start pouring in the sugar. So that all gets mixed up and then I make the cakes and I put them in there and then I put them on top of the hives. Any of the, the weaker hives or the lighter hives, I'll put it on top and you check those in about three weeks or so. Uh, and if they've eaten through it, the cool thing about these things is they're stackable. So uh, let's say they ate through it all, but they're not done. Uh, one thing I've done is I've taken, uh, taken them off and I collect them all. And I, if I have just a whole bunch of chunks, I'll just dump all the chunks into another tray and put that in a hive. Or if I really need to, I will just stack this on top of another hive. Um, you don't want to go too far because the, the queen may not be able to get through this quarter inch here. So you wouldn't want a situation where the queen's stuck lower than the rest of the hive um, in that cluster. So two at the most, I wouldn't really go above that. And then you're, you could enter into some problems. Some guys put in um, pollen patties. We still have hive beetles all the way through the winter. I popped those hives when I was putting these things down. I saw like eight hive beetles scatter. So we have hive beetles, even though we've been in the twenties here, they just don't die. They overwinter in the cluster. And so you don't want to give them an early option on laying larva. Now, one of the cool things is a lot of times this thing is not, they don't keep the, this candy board warm. So you could put some in there that larva would die because it's not going to be it's not going to be warm like the rest of the hive but i don't feel like it's really necessary and i don't really want to stimulate the hive to lay in eggs right now in uh early february because i don't think i could keep enough honey on them if, they, if the queen really started laying in earnest so I, I really don't want that to happen until late march if i can avoid it um so i, I think i covered everything I've, this is about the 15th time i've tried to do this video and I tend to ramble a whole lot, but if you have any questions, uh, put the questions down in the, the comment section and I will, I'm gotten a lot better about answering those. And so I'll, I'll jump down there and answer those. So thank you. And if there's a video you want to see, I do plan on making some other videos on insulated top covers. Um, maybe some videos on how I do my CNC stuff where I, uh, put my name on all my top bars and, and things like that to, um, keep the hive from getting stolen. Um, I have some bottom boards that I'm going to try out this year that have integrated uh, beetle traps in them uh, that are a little different. They're a combination of several beetle methods all in one and um, see if I can figure out how to, how to design what I want to make in the 3D printer, but we'll see. So if you have something or a question, feel free to pop down in the chat. Thanks.